Hi, welcome to your 14 day weather forecast. There has been some heavy and indeed thundery rain in parts of the UK during recent days, but also quite a lot of dry and warm weather. Here's a picture I took of the remains of a Berghamster Castle a couple of days ago. A lovely blue sky. In fact, May so far has been a very warm month. The TWO temperature tracker, which is very close to the Central England series, is running at 14.4 Celsius currently. That's way above all of the comparators which can be seen there. In fact, we're currently running at record breaking levels. This shows the May Central England temperatures for all of the Mays this century so far. The warmest was in 2008, 13.4 Celsius there over the month as a whole. And as I just pointed out, currently we're running at around 14.4. So this May, were it to continue in the same vein, will be warmer than any one this century. And I think it would probably be a record breaker. Well, so how are things shaping up? Let's have a look. The animation here runs from 18 GMT, Tuesday the 21st, and with those potentially record-breaking temperatures that I've been talking about, it's worth noting straight away that there is a fly in the ointment because we've got some very heavy outbreaks of rain pushing northwards through the first couple of days across central and northern parts of the UK as an area of low pressure moves up from continental Europe, that will suppress temperatures. But then as we go into the bank holiday weekend, high pressure starts to return, build across the UK, so it's turning drier, more settled and warmer, at least at the start of the period, because this is 09 GMT on Saturday, and you can see there is a weather front here in the Atlantic beginning to make inroads into Northern Ireland there. How does this play out? Well, what we see is for weather from weekends, for outbreaks mostly in the north and west, possibly some showers at times, or even some heavy ones in England, but often high pressure to the south will have more influence, at least for a time. So through the bank holiday weekend into the other part of next week, because what this shows at the very end here is another little disturbance running in from the west, potentially bringing some heavy outbreaks of rain there to Wales and southwestern parts of the UK, maybe pushing eastwards across all areas later. But I think by this point, as usual, there is a lot of uncertainty. Some of the other computer models, which I'll look at a little bit later, are different. The jet stream and upper air temperature sequence associated with that same GFS run here. To start off with yellow shading of much and much of the UK is indicating relatively warm air aloft. The jet stream is quite sort of discombobulated at this point of the season. It's heading up northwards there with the UK on its warmer southern side. And as I run the sequence, what we see is it's quite a sort of bitty picture in terms of the jet stream, although later on there there are some signs of it getting its act together, strengthening and maybe bringing more changeable or unsettled weather, at least for time for UK. As I've just said though, this is not necessarily well supported by various other computer model runs, so I'll look at it in a little bit more detail later. Surface conditions, which we can expect, I'm just going to show an assortment of charts here through this first week. Um, I wanted to highlight the heavy rain early on, so this is Wednesday, the charts generated using data from the UKV model. It looks at this point at least that Southern England may well escape the worst of the rain, certainly central parts of Southern England and the southwest, more uncertainty there about East Anglia. But what we see is this chart is 11 GMT on Wednesday, that heavy rain associated with the area of low pressure, which is centered just to the east here, moving northwards. The next chart there is at 3 GMT, 3 PM GMT, with the rain really focusing on uh, central and northern parts. But there could, with that said, be some heavy and thundery showers developing in southern counties. So it's really a very unsettled picture on Wednesday. I would expect some high rain totals, particularly in central and northern regions, but that will move away. Now, as we head into the bank holiday weekend, so Saturday the 25th, 
UKV charts once again. Temperatures on the left, 24 Celsius fair being shown in the London area. Temperatures widely over 20 in much of southern and central Britain. And it's a mostly dry picture, a bright one too, as can be seen from the chart on the right. There are a few showers in Scotland but not very many really and also we can see outbreaks of rain just starting to push into Northern Ireland affecting Ireland more generally there are some heavy bursts of rain being shown there with that said it is quite a patchy area of rain and all in all not too bad it looks pretty good on Saturday but the uncertainty really grows through Sunday and into Bank Holiday Monday itself. The chart on the left here is generated using data from the European model and on the right there it's from the UK Met Office Global. So there are some differences. The UK Met Global has that area of low pressure moving in from the Atlantic, some heavy showers developing ahead of it, but the European model is generally keeping things drier. And that really maintains a the theme as we go into Bank Holiday Monday itself. The European has high pressure bringing a fine day. The UK Met Global outbreaks of rain are clearing eastward. So quite a lot of uncertainty there about the progression through the Bank Holiday weekend. Saturday, good support. I think for it to be a mostly fine day, Sunday and Monday, more uncertainty. Very difficult to make a call at this stage. I think on balance, it doesn't look too bad for UK Met Global there. Could be something of an outlier, particularly for central and eastern parts of England. Rain more likely though in the, in the northwest. That's how it looks at the moment. So fingers crossed if you're in central parts of the UK, southern parts, that you'll get reasonable weather for, for much of Sunday and Bank Holiday Monday may be a greater risk of rain, as I'm saying, in the northwest. But don't count your chickens yet. If you're in the south, that rain may be more widespread. Here are the aggregate rainfall totals for days not five from the ECM and GFS models. 50 millimetres or more being shown in much of central northern Britain. A lot of that, though, falling through Wednesday, as I showed earlier. After the initial batch of rain clears, there should be quite a lot of dry weather through uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Moving forwards to the 0 to 10 day charts, the totals have increased basically everywhere. Now, although they are still in single digits there in the southeast on the GFS chart, the one on the right, not too much rain through the five to 10 day period, if this is correct, in the south more in the north but these charts have both really been skewed by that very wet period early on. So how do the deterministic models compare with each other in more general terms as we head towards the end of the first week? This is the GFS which the sequence was based on. Low pressure there to the west to the northwest signaling that rather mixed picture. The Canadian model also has an area of low pressure beginning to push in from the west at this point on Tuesday. The German icon, high pressure here more dominant, it's building up across the UK, low pressure a bit further west. The European model, a little bit messier in some ways, although high pressure having more influence. Areas of low pressure there to the north west. And finally, the UK Met Global, high pressure down to the southwest and to the east there again. At this point as well, it looks a little bit more changeable with that area of rain, which I showed clear and eastwards. High pressure may be building up from the southwest, keeping it drier in southern and central regions. But all in all, it doesn't look a particularly robust area of high pressure. So taking all of those together, there are a lot of there is a lot of uncertainty about the details as we head towards the end of the first week drier conditions look more likely in the south that's where high pressure will probably have more of an influence in the east perhaps to a greater risk of rain in the west and the northwest does that continue to be the case as we head through week two of course at this range it's just about the trends and the probabilities i'll start with the 16 day GEFS, so the Ensemble Model Plot for London. 
Upper air temperatures across the top, there is a strong signal for them to be above the average. The thick purple line, the, third, the, the, the ensemble mean, remains well above the thick black line, the 30 year norm. So at about 1500 meters, quite a warm air mass appears likely to be covering at least this part of the UK for much of the time. In fact, if you look towards the end of the second week, there, there are one or two, in fact, one run in particular going for very, very warm air aloft. 850 HPA temperatures are actually climbing above 20 Celsius, I think to about 22 or 23. And I took a look at that run, it leads to temperatures at the surface of around 33 or 34 Celsius. It's a big outlier though, which means it's very unlikely it's the only run out of 33 which are going for something like that. Don't totally discount it, it could happen, it's unlikely though. Generally though, temperatures probably above the norm, at least at this level. It also looks relatively dry early on. There are a few spikes there. The thick green line is the GFS operation, which that initial animation was based on. And I think it's probably one of the wetter runs in the ensemble as can be seen here. The, the, the thick green line spikes are bigger than uh, through the first few days of the second week than a lot of the other runs are showing. So probably maybe not that much support as I was hinting for that area of low pressure towards the end of the first week and into the early part of the second to bring very wet conditions to the south. Later on though the number of spikes there increases suggesting more changeable weather returning. The two meter temperature data table for London lots of the oranges and pinky reds there so runs going for 21 to 25 celsius in that orangey category for the lighter orange there 16 to 20 a few going into the 26 to 30 and there is that outlier run which is going above 30 celsius i think quite a warm picture really through the second week in the south the overnight lows also quite high 11 to 15 according to most of the runs and there are a few which are going for overnight lows of 16 to 20 celsius very warm and starting to reach the time of year where it becomes quite difficult for some people to sleep up to Manchester, the trends here are quite similar. I think for a, a, there are a few more rain spikes early on through the second, through the uh, through the uh, first few days of the second week. Two meter temperature data tables for Manchester also suggest reasonably good temperatures for the time of the year in this part of the UK. The overnight lows a few degrees lower than in the south. Up to Glasgow for differences. With this one, the upper air temperatures are generally a lot closer to the 30 year norm. Also, there's a greater risk of rain early in the period and that continues throughout. So it looks like a fairly typical pattern beginning to establish here. For much of the spring, we've had high pressure centered to the north and areas of low pressure pushing across the south, which is where the wettest conditions have often been. These charts are indicating that it's going to be the northwest of the UK where the coolest and wettest conditions are on most days. The two meter temperature data table for Glasgow support that idea with lower values through the days and the nights. The ECM probability charts here show the chance of five millimeters or more of rain falling on the first three days of the second week. The yellow and orange shading, the green shading, mostly in the west, the northwest of the UK, significantly a lower percentage chance is in the south and the east of England. Although through the second part of the second week, it does look as though the chance of rain increases in central, southern and eastern counties. We've got some more dark blue shading here indicating about a 20 to 30 percent chance in those areas of five millimeters or more of rain falling on any given day. The GEFS day 10 to 15 pressure anomaly chart suggests higher than average pressure in central and eastern England, slightly lower than average in the northwest. So it's just reinforcing the message really. Finally, the mean surface level pressure data table for York. So this one's going through the second week. 
doesn't really show a strong trend. There is something of a downward signal here, more green beginning to appear and the orangey reds there dropping out. So perhaps a weakening of pressure as we go through the second week. So to summarize, week one, heavy outbreaks of rain clear from central and northern areas during the first couple of days. It then turns drier and warmer as we head towards the bank holiday weekend, but confidence in the details begins to fall. And there could well be some rain around later on, especially in the north and the northwest. Week two, Dry and warm periods are quite probable to begin with, particularly in the south, but the more changeable weather in the north starts to spread southwards later. So there is a risk of showers or long spells of rain in all parts of the UK, but temperatures probably remaining above the average. So uh, there we have it, quite a mixed bag of weather. The details for the bank holiday weekend are still somewhat elusive. Saturday looks promising. More uncertainty about Sunday and Monday, especially in the northwest. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. As ever, then if you did, please consider hitting the like button below and subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. And remember to stay up to date with the day-to-day -day weather developments, particularly as the bank holiday weekend approaches, by checking out the weatheroutlook.com website. Thank you very much now. Bye.